Hey you know, everyone, uh, welcome to UV Chef and this week's menu. As usual, I've got 10 dishes coming up for you shortly, which I'm gonna take you through, show you how to put them together. It's really, really easy, especially with a video, showing you a few tips. Uh, you've got your recipe booklet inside the box as well, so it's easy to follow. Everything is 95% ready to go. It's just basically a heat up job, uh, but you've got, of course, for last minute little bits, um, real fun bits as a chef to put the dish together, make it look amazing on the plate. Um, don't forget, last few days to order for Easter. Um, cracking menu coming out, Isle of Wight tomatoes, uh, lovely goat's cheese from Green Barn uh, on there as well. Uh, so yeah, some really lovely things on there, stuffed salad of lamb. Uh, we've got an Easter bunnies uh, little dessert, a uh, lovely little carrot cake with little candied carrots, all sorts of stuff going on there. Um, anyway, enough of that, let's get cooking with this week's menu. Um, you and Chef, 10 dishes coming up. So my weekly bake uh, this week um, is a malted chowder loaf. Um, so in here, um, we've foiled it for you so you can heat it up in the oven, it's not going to dry out. So take your chowder bun, uh, there's four little buns all joined together in here so you can split it up nicely. Uh, that's going to go on a baking tray in the oven about 10 to 12 minutes. So in that goes. Um, and then when we come back, I'm going to show you putting this together. Uh, we've got this little lovely little ball of treacle butter. So this has just been whipped up, it's lovely and light. Um, it's got black treacle in there, uh, seasoned up. And then in here, um, I've got some toasted oats uh, with some malt powder in as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll my butter in the oats. So the way to do that, just put it onto your board like so, and then get your butter. And you see how I'm just gonna roll that round and around. And then once you've got a little bit on there, pick it up in your hand and just coat that. And as you roll it round in your hands, the butter will warm and the oats will stick more and more. Just a little bit of fun, just a bit different than just doing a straightforward butter on a plate. And there we go. So, a little tidy up. You can use that for more. And there you've got that lovely little puck of butter. Take some salt. If you prefer, it is a little bit of molten salt on the top. And I'm just gonna leave that ball of butter now, ready for my bread to come out. Now it's gonna be beautifully and soft, all ready to just spread all over it when it comes out. So, back in about 10 minutes to finish this off. So, just gonna get my chowder buttons out now. There we go. Careful of that tray, it's really hot. And then careful as you unwrap it as well, because there could be a bit of steam in there. So, here we go. You see there, look, look at that beautiful glaze on the top of there. Lovely glaze. Smelled absolutely delicious. Some toasted oats rolled on the top and you've got that really lovely shine on there. Now, up to you, you can either tear it or cut it. I like to just tear it. Look at that. Portioned up straight away. Tiny bit of rapeseed I'm gonna put on the top just for that extra little shine as it gets to the table. And then look, let's just get it onto our board and get all four on there. And then just carefully take your butter it's your whipped treacle butter there, rolled in the oats and toasted malt, and there you go. So a lovely way to start, a little tear and share, uh, malted chowder bun, uh, chowder bun sorry, with the whipped treacle butter. Enjoy. First start of you, I've got this capaccio of yellow fin tuna here. So you see what we've done, uh, we've seared it just on the outside, and then we've rolled it in a mixture of parsley and tarragon, brushed it in mustard, and then in the herbs, uh, and then sliced very, very thinly. Uh, so you've got your carpaccio there, and in here we've got anisoise vegetables, so we've got courgette peppers, we've got some red onion, lovely little colour on there, quail eggs, um, we've got some uh, ca um, sorry, green olives, big gourdale green olives, and this little garlic confit in there as well. So that's all our veg, and then we've got um, a little basil cress, we've got a basil oil, anchovies, and also a sherry vinegar dressing to dress our um, anisoise salad. So what you want to do first, have your plate ready, and then carefully cut open the sachet. So you see, this is what I mean by human chef, it's all ready to go. No messing about. Out it comes, you've got your carpaccio like that. It's on a little bit of paper. Um, so what you wanna do, lift your paper, up on the paper like that, get your plate, and you can see you can sort of position it on your plate, and then turn it over like so. See, like that. And then very, very carefully peel off. That's your tuna capaccio, easy as that. Huh? Then, what we're doing next, take your little quail egg out from the vegetables, and then get your Lissoise dressing, which is aged, aged sherry vinegar dressing. A little bit of that on there. 
doesn't need any seasoning, the seasoning's already in the dressing. We make it easy here at Ubi Chef. And then let's get some of those veg, and let's put them all the way around. And here, here's your chance to be a bit chefy, get some nice presentation going on. Play with those colours, and make it look really lush. So, courgette. Lovely gourd our olives. They're marinated with a little uh, chili, so they've got a little little spice to them. And then let's take our little garlic cloves out as well. A bit more of those really nice bits of red onion. Deglose de those and sherry vinegar, which makes them lovely and um, psychedelic kind of purple. So what I'm gonna do is just open up the end of my garlic clove just like that and that means you can just get hold of it and just pop lovely little garlic clove so same with the other one there we go now a little clean down of our board then our quail leg sharp knife nice and gently slice through like so if you prefer I'd like me a little bit of seasoning just on those eggs then just sit them. Throw a punch in there. There we go. Next, we've got anchovies. Again, if you don't like anchovies, no problem at all. Just leave them off the dish. I love them, so they're going on. Little anchovy. And then back we come basil oil. And this is your chance to dress that tuna underneath as well. So just lightly, maybe you want to taste everything in there, you don't want it to mask the flavour. There we go. And let's get our basil cress. Just a few little pieces. Just dotted around for that lovely little vibrant green colour. There we go. Again, if you can, if you want to put other herbs on there, you can use normal basil. It's just this flavour really works well with these Niswa's veg. So, almost there. There we go. Beautiful, look at that. So, that is my salad Niswa's uh, yellowfin sustainable tuna underneath there. Lovely way to kick off the menu. So, it's comfy duck for my uh, next course view. Uh, this is comfy duck leg in here. Uh, a little panko breadcrumbs around the outside, so nice and crispy. Uh, this little puck is going to go in the oven about 10 to 12 minutes. So in it goes. Um, and then the garnishes when we come back, what I'm going to show you is um, first of all, we'll slayer at Remillard. This is a little posh word for coleslaw. Uh, so in here we've got salted uh, slayer at julienne, um, which then we've rinsed off, and then we put them in a lemon mayonnaise with some gherkins, capers, and parsley and lemon as well. Lots of lemon juice in there. Next garnish is uh, extra fine green beans, and there's this lovely little crumb on there of serrano ham, uh, just for that little salty uh, kick. Uh, pickled walnut dressing, um, and then on the here we've got some little shaved walnuts just to go on the top. So we'll give that 10 or so minutes in there, I'll come back and I'll show you how to put it together. So my duck confit is nearly ready now. What I'm going to do is take some of my pickled walnut dressing here and put a little bit of that over your fine beans to start with. Give them a little stir, and again that dressing's gonna start making all those flavors mix together. Don't need any salt on here, because it's got the ham in there, so it's already got loads of flavor. There we go. Now next, I've got a posh little ring mold here, but you could use a little pastry cutter, anything like that. But basically take some of your remoulade, and just get that into your mold, like so. And then push it all down with the back of the spoon, get it nice and even, so it's all looking nice and uniform. And do this off the plate because then you're not getting all the plates smudged and covered with all the mayonnaise and things. So that's all good. Then take a fish slice onto your plate and then just carefully go around with a spoon and just turn it out. 
Okay, so nice and simple. And next we're gonna get our croquette out of the oven. Here it comes. Tiniest bit of salt on there, because remember we're getting all the beans on top. A little bit of salt. Then I'm gonna sit my little duck leg on the top. And then let's go with some of our beans next. So, first of all, start to kind of layer them round a little bit. And what you want to do, get a bit of height built up on here. Just so that you can get your maximum beans on there. And as you do it, you're kind of getting lovely height. You're also getting a bit of kind of spacing in there so you can see through, you can see those lovely bits of crispy serrano ham. So go as high as you dare. There, there we go. I'm not gonna go any higher because if it topples over I'll look like a bit of an idiot. So let's give a plate a little clean. There we go. And then what do you want to do then? Take your shaved walnuts and just like snow on top of your beans. And then lastly, get some of that pickled walnut dressing. Make sure you get some of the actual pickled walnuts as well. And just get us get some of that on the top. And this is lovely and vinegary. Goes beautiful with that duck. And there you go. So another really simple starter. Lift that out nice and carefully. Slayerette remoulade, crispy duck, salad of fine beans and serrano ham, pickled walnut dressing. Enjoy. Uh, last starter uh, for this week, um, we've got a terrine of asparagus, so salad of asparagus, but the asparagus part is this terrine here. So you see, uh, you've got all the lovely spears of asparagus set in its own jelly, uh, going through, lovely, yeah, really nice. Really important with this that you leave it out at room temperature uh, to warm up, and also when you serve it, take the clean film off. Uh, so it's got a layer of clean film around the outside, that's to sort of keep it, on, keep it nicely together. Um, I'm serving it with this crispy duck egg, so you've got a duck egg there in crispy panko breadcrumbs, that's going to go in the oven, so get a little bacon tray in the oven, about four to five minutes, not long. That's just to re-crispen that breadcrumbs up um, and that'll be all ready. Uh, I'm going to serve it with also a little salvo uh, crouton. Um, I've got a truffle mayonnaise to go with it here. Truffle dressing, you guess there's a lot of truffle going on here. Um, and then also look in there, look at that, beautiful black truffle, lovely little marble in there. Smells absolutely wonderful, really, really nice. Uh, keep the little uh, cotton pad on the top of it, I'll stop it drying out. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes and I'll show you how to put this one together. So my egg is just about to come out of the oven. What I'm going to do, the asparagus terrine, I'm going to take a little bit of rapeseed oil, just onto the top, and then get the back of a spoon, just rub it in there. You see instant shine, looks lovely and you know, vibrant, brilliant time of year now, I'll spring all these spring flavours in. And get your spatula, take it off the paper that it comes on, keep the clean from on at the moment, and then see, just inch it onto your plate. Then just go at the edge, and you can just pull that piece of clean film off the side. Okay, next bit, you've got this truffle mayonnaise just here. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Take the, that one, cut the end off, and then see how just piping that truffle mayonnaise on. Then your croutons. Just take some of those croutons. I'm just gonna sit a few on the top, like so. There we go. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of my truffle. I'm just gonna get some of the slices out. Oh, little finicky ones. And just, that's some of those slices. Just on the top, like that. Okay, so beautiful colors already. So a little tidy down. Then remember we've got our truffle dressing to go on. 
Let's get our egg out of the oven. Careful of a tray, really, really hot. Tiny bit of seasoning, just on the top there. Just crumble it up as it goes on. I, like, I use mold and salt. Now let's sit our egg just at the side. Don't put it on the terrine because it will start to melt it. And then all you need to do to finish that little truffle dressing around. There we go. So my last starter of the week, uh, crispy duck egg, terrine of asparagus, black truffle, truffle mayonnaise, and truffle dressing. Enjoy. Risotto Milanese is up next for our main course. Um, so what I've sent you with, um, you've got tiger prawn just here. So a lovely big tiger prawn, just butterfly on the top. Uh, and some small tiger prawns in, as well. They're gonna go in the oven for about six to eight minutes. Uh, and then what you've also got, you've got your rice just here. So in here, this is the rice which has been cooked with a really, really solid shellfish stock. So like real langoustine tiger prawn, serious flavor. Smell it, it's just, you know, absolutely packed. Um, aged parmesan on the top of there, saffron, uh, that's our rice. Then we've got fennel, so braised fennel uh, with some charred lemon on the top, makes the juice lovely and sweet. The both of those are in the oven for about six to eight minutes. Let's get them in. And then get a pan. Your rice, this is like super, super simple risotto. End up with an absolute cracking result. So put all your rice in your pan, like so, with the parmesan. And then in here, this is like the magic liquor. Um, this is the shellfish stock which we cook the rice in, so it's got loads of starch in there. It's got butter, creme fraiche. So that's gonna go in. This is measured exactly. So in that goes. Now that's gonna go on the heat. We're gonna bring that to the boil. And then once it's up to the boil, we're gonna cook it, cook it then for about four minutes on the simmer. Now, that's up to you. If you want it a little bit more, if you prefer your rice a little bit less al dente, another minute, a bit less if you prefer it sort of real, real bite. So I'm gonna bring that up, I'm gonna keep stirring it, and make sure you've got ready to finish it off. Your sea herbs, which I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of rapeseed oil on, just to give them a lovely little shine. They're gonna go room temperature, and our whipped cream. So that's gonna finish our risotto at the end. So the butter and the cheese is gonna melt into it. Whipped cream is gonna go in lovely and light texture at the end. So we'll be back in a few minutes and I'll show you how to put this together. Okay, so risotto milanese is well and truly on the way now. Hot plate ready to go. And let's, let me show you my risotto here. So let's turn that off. Four minutes, you can see the texture. See, lovely and rich. That's got the butter in there, plenty of butter. It's got the Parmesan. It's really lovely and rich. So what I'm gonna do, is take my whipped cream, a little bit of whipped cream in there, and then almost like making the cake now, just fold that in and it will just melt into it. Lovely and light, okay? And there's lemon juice in the cooking liquor. We've got the charred lemon coming as well, so there's loads of citrus in here to make it really super zingy. So that's my result, I'm just gonna leave it to sit there whilst I get my garnish out. So here we come, there's my prawns, and there's my fennel and charred lemon. So when they come out, give your fennel a little bit of a toss around and a little bit of rape sort of lemon that we've sent with it. And you've got all your prawns there. And let's get our risotto rice. Pour it onto your plate. It's a nice portion as well. Obviously it's a risotto dish, so we want a good amount of rice on there. No mucking about. So that's all on. And then let's get a touch of fennel. Put a few little pieces on there. We've just, we've just braised this slowly a few and then just so it can reheat in the oven. And then my prawn. Just gonna kind of just open it up a little bit put that sitting on there. The reason I've taken the rest out of the shell is so we haven't got a fight with peeling them. And then let's get our tiger prawns 
And again, all we've done with these is just colour them a little bit for you to get a nice little charry flavour on there. So prawns are nearly all on, nice and generous on there. Let's get some sea herbs. As many of you know, quite a fond favourite of mine. Go down the beach and down at Ventnor and get these really nice rock samphire sea beet. Lovely selection. Shouldn't tell you all because obviously there'll be none left, but anyway. So more sea herbs. These are nice and nice and lemony, not salty like a marsh samphire grass. And then let's get our lemon. See if you can squeeze that all over the top. Let's get that on. And then finally, I'm going to go a tiny bit of rapeseed. Again, I love that little yellow fleck, little nuttiness from the oil. And there you have it. Help clean of a plate. And that's my risotto milanese there with char grilled tiger prawn, uh, sea herbs, and braised fennel. Next main course for you is cockle van. So lovely classic dish. Uh, we've not messed about with it. We've done it like super classic, uh, but again, easy for you to put together at home. So we've got mashed potato, uh, lovely and buttery, really nice and smooth. Get that into a pan, spatula. It's going to take a few minutes just to heat up. Now onto the main event, your cockle van. So undo it from your container. And then what you'll find inside, here you go. So we've got the breast of chicken, we've got the fire, we've got a drumstick, all nice and trimmed up, see? Um, we left that one on the bone so it's nice and juicy, but everything else is trimmed up in there. I've got some smoked bacon lardons on there. I've got some baby naves, little turnips. And then in the bottom I've got little baby onions, dice of carrot, a dice of celeriac, list goes on. And then of course the red wine sauce in the bottom of there. Simple, this is gonna go in the oven 25 to 30 minutes. And halfway through, just baste it a little bit. Just baste those pieces of chicken with the sauce. So let's get that in there. There we go. And then our garnishes. Quite simple, some little crispy cavolo nero. Um, that's gonna go in the oven a couple of minutes at the end, just to reheat it. And I've sent you just with a little braised carrot, purple carrot. I've got a pan of water just on here. So you can drop the whole bag into the water. Uh, five minutes, it's all ready to go. So we'll be back in about 25 minutes and I'll show you how to put my cockle van together. Okay, so I'm almost ready to serve up my cockle van now. So that's my mash. Make sure you keep on Stirring it with a marise or a little spatula, as we call it. There we go. Hot pearl, and then I've got my crispy cavolo near over there, and then my braised carrot. Just get a little pair of um, kitchen tongs or tweezers and just fish that out, like so. Just gonna. Cut that out on the plate, and then we're going to dress this up with a little bit of rape oil. The reason I don't put that in the water is because obviously it's a purple carrot, you lose a lot of the colour straight away and the flavour. So, a bit of rapeseed, you see straight away, look at all that colour coming out of there straight away. So, really, really important that why we cook that sous vide. And then let's get our copper van out the oven. Smells delicious. And as I said, I basted this halfway through, but when it comes out the oven again, just you see, take some of that sauce. Look at that lovely red wine sauce there. And just baste up your chicken. Okay, so let's get this plated. Uh, I'm gonna pipe my uh, mash on. You don't have to pipe it, you can spoon it on, up to you. But get the mash. If you're doing it this way, all into the bag, and then squeeze it all down, tie it off at the end, and then I'm just going to cut the end off. So you can reuse these, just wash them out really well, let them dry. So mash, I'm going to, there you go, pipe a lovely bit of mash on there. Then I'm going to start off getting some of my chicken. So, there's a piece of thigh. And then look at that, lovely bit of breast meat. That's right down in the sauce, so that it stops 
stops it from drying out at all. And I'm going to get some of my garnish on. There we go. Naves there, with that root left on. Lovely bit of presentation. And then all of our lovely little dice veg. You can see how reduced that sauce is. And the smell of the wine coming off, that's the way it should be really, like really nice and winey, so you can really tell it's there. More onions, more garnish, and sauce. Then what I'm gonna do, a little bit of sauce to glaze up my carrot as well. Let's get that. Sit it in the right place straight away because it will it will leak colour. Beautiful. And then your crispy pieces of cavolo. Couple on there. Let's just break the end off of that one. So that's all on. And then finally I'm going back for some more sauce. Cockerbank should have a nice bit of sauce going around there. Look at that. So that's my cockerbank all ready for the table. You've got that braised little purple carrot in there, silky mash, root vegetables, smoked bacon. Oh, smells delicious. Hope you enjoy it. Last main course for you this week, um, and we've brought back a classic, Uber Chef. This is our twice baked souffle. So you can see it in there. Um, a lovely, like, nice big chunk of souffle. Um, it's got a little topping on there of the goat's cheese. This is green barn goat's cheese produced uh, West White. Um, really, really lovely. It's not too stringent, nice and light. And then I've got some aged parmesan sitting on the top. That's going to go in the oven, and this little sauce on the top is going to melt and then glaze up as it bakes. That's going in 12 to 14 minutes. So then, in preparation for my souffle coming out, you've got your um, little fricassee here. Again, really easy, the sauce is in the bottom. So get all of that out into your pan. And again, this has all been made so that basically you can bring that to the temperature in the pan with the sauce, peas, um, broad beans in there, fresh tarragon, baby onions. Um, and that's gonna come up to temperature. You just need to heat it, you don't need to cook it. Um, and then the garnish, we've got some pea shoots. Um, lovely little bit of dressing just to go on the pea shoots. This is made with the goat's whey. When they hang up the goat's cheese, the whey comes out the bottom, but it's still highly flavoured of the goat's cheese. Um, so we're going to shake that, dress our pea shoots, and then we'll be back in about 10 to plate the last of our main courses up. So, almost ready to plate my souffle here. Just got my little fricassee off the stove. You see that, not cooked it for too long. Tarragon is still nice and fresh in there. And let's take a spoon of my goat's whey and herb dressing just onto my pea shoots, give them a little stir, a little season as well. Keep your dressing ready for the souffle just to garnish it. And then let's get souffle out nice and careful, nice and quick. So out comes the souffle. Take your fricassee, little pile of that on the plate. And obviously some of the sauce, that's a real integral part of the dish. So a bit of that sauce around. You always herbs in. There we go. Then spatula. Just ease it away from the side. Like so. And then let's get our spatula under there. Take that out. And then we'll go under the paper. And then let's get that on. There we go. Lovely big puffy souffle. Then finally, pea shoots. Just nice and fresh to serve with it. And obviously in keeping with the, the ingredients in the dish, little clean down, a little bit more dressing. Just a touch, this way dressing's quite strong. It splits out the dressing nicely, or the fricassee sauce, sorry, on the bottom, so there we go. And that's it. Let's get it to the table nice and fast. Twice baked, goat's cheese souffle, fricassees, uh, spring vegetables, and a lovely little pea shoot salad on the top. On the top. On to desserts now.
first one is a tan of pink lady apples. So I like using the pink ladies because they've got like a lovely little zing to them, but they hold up nicely when you cook them. Um, so cut it out of the bag. We just put it in the bag so it arrives to you uh, without the caramel uh, leaking all over the place. Um, under it, and then inside, th this is already, like the apples are already cooked, uh, but the pastry is raw because pastry is much better cooked, cooked to order. So get this in the oven nice and early. Make sure your pastry is nice and tucked down the edges. Like that, lovely. 25 to 30 minutes in the oven. You can cook it beforehand and it will happily sit there for a little while and then when you serve it, just reheat it for like two, three minutes if, if necessary. Um, what I'm going to be serving with it, I've got this Calvados cream in here, so a little Calvados mousse which we're just going to roche on top. Um, cassia spice custard, so like cinnamon, a little bit, a bit more heat to it. And then I'll just send you with some um, Pink Lady Apple so you can make some nice little batons uh, just to sit on top of the tatan. So, back in about 25 minutes and we'll get this one plated up. My tatan is all cooked now, so let's get it out of the oven. Here we go. Onto your board, watch out, really, really hot. Let's get rid of that hot tray. Now, Paul, just leave this to rest, a minute or so, just for that caramel to sort of like calm down slightly. In the meantime, let's slice open our bit of pink lady. And then what we do is just sort of cut off the end and eat that lovely pink, juicy pink lady. And then look, take some nice, thin slices, use that finger just to sort of you know, keep the apple nice and still, turn it over, see how we just line it up and then we'll just cut off some of that outside and then there you go, nice bottom. So be really, really careful, make them look lovely, let's keep them all in reserve. So that's my apple baton all ready to go. The rest of the apple, you can save it and eat it, of course. <laughs> so, tatan, and then remember the garnishes, we've got our custard here, and we've got our cream. So, custard first of all. Take a spoon, I'm serving this cold because I've got the tatan, which is all hot, so I want a little difference in flavors, difference in temperatures. So, use the back of a ladle. Just uh, get that out, there you go, all done. And then make sure you've got a hot spoon ready to go. And that's gonna to be to dip our cream in the water. So, sorry, dip our spoon and then that will get the cream out. So, take a little spatula, make sure the tatan is nice and released. Turn it over, inch it up. Make sure you get that sauce, the tatan, it should just have all that sauce actually that's cook, cooked with it. And then just gonna rearrange that little bit of those, uh, cassia on the top there. Now oh, see that's not to eat, that's just to kind of show the spice it's been cooked with. And then, there we go, nice and careful. You've got a whole tatan each of course. Nice and generous at Ubi Chef. And then see just a little bit of that caramel sauce just on the top there. So a little wipe of the plate. And then what I want you to do is get some of that apple. And just this is like you know a little bit of freshness, a little bit of zing. Whack that all around. Lovely little white colour against the rich caramel. Yeah, you've got so much sweetness going on in there that it almost needs that bit of fresh apple just garnished. So, that's all good to go. And one more in there. There we go, lovely. And then lastly, as I said, hot spoon. Tap it off and then in to your Calvados cream and then just sit that nice and carefully in the center. That's it, straight to the table uh, for this beautiful dessert, classic tart tan pink lady apples, flavor of cassia, Calvados cream, and the, the little cassia custard underneath. Really, really delicious, lovely way to finish the dessert.
Uh, so second dessert here. Um, we've got a white chocolate, blood orange and stem ginger cheesecake on the bottom. Lovely little layer of ginger nuts, white chocolate mousse, blood orange jelly. A uh, little tip for you, if you've got a blowtorch or grill, just under the grill. Not long though at all, because it will melt. So, there we go, that's it. I'm just going to sit that there, like that. And then my garnishes, I've got white chocolate aero, just there. You see like lovely and light chocolate, just like that. Make sure that stays in the freezer until last thing until you're ready to use it. Um, and then I've got my little orange segments just here, um, which are um, just a little bit of orange confit in there and a blood orange sauce on it as well. So what we're going to do is take my little mousse, just going to give it a little smooth off right the way around the outside. There we go. And then onto our plate. Then we're going to take some of our segments and in here you've got some normal orange like big oranges nice and fresh zingy you've got the blood oranges in there as well a little bit sweeter so let's get a nice little mixture of those segments going around the outside loving the combination here balancing all that sweetness out from the tart then let's get some of our sauce just a little bit Drizzled in between. There we go. And then lastly, get your white chocolate arrow and just place a couple of bits or so just on there. There we go. So that's my little cheesecake there, blood orange, chocolate arrow, uh, caramelised oranges, uh, lovely dessert, lovely and zingy. Hope you enjoy it. Last dish as usual is my uh, cheese selection. So it's a cheese tasting board this week to finish off with. Um, carefully cut it out of a lovely little wallet that it comes in, all uh, safe and sound. Make it, make sure it reaches you perfect condition. And then peel off a little bit of paper. And what you've got, all your cheeses there, really, really important that they are at room temperature, at least 15 minutes, ideally more, um, to make sure they all taste an absolute bang on. Um, and then what we're gonna do, just arrange them in tasting order. So um, let's get them going first of all. Flower Marie on there. Um, then I've got my little Doris sitting there. Old Grandel, that's my German cheese just on as well. And then lovely Montgomery's aged cheddar. Gorgonzola. And a little bit of quince just at the end. So I've got my chutney to serve with it. And then these are malted crackers here. So malt powder going through the bread dough. Um, and we just kind of roll that uh, very, very thinly um, through the pasta machine. I uh, really like the crackers. It sound a bit different than cheese biscuits. So let's stack a nice few of those up. Let's get a little bit of chutney. Don't need too much because we've already got our quince on there. And then just put a little spoonful there we go. And the beauty of this is obviously you can try different cheeses with the chutney and the um, and the quince paste, and of course those really lovely malted crackers, which are um, touch of mold and salt in there. So enjoy the cheese course. Hope you enjoyed this week's UB Chef menu. Uh, don't forget we've got Easter next week, which is still available to order until this Sunday. Um, it's basically almost sold out, but last chance to order. And then after that, plenty of menus as always. Four weeks menus ahead, uh, all the time on the site. Um, it's going to be carrying on. Can't wait for summer ingredients as well coming in. Um, beautiful strawberries, Isle of Wight, asparagus is going to be coming in soon uh, from the island. And, yeah, fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, hope you enjoyed this week. If you haven't had UV Chef before, give it a go. It's loads of fun, really, really simple. Um, and look forward to seeing you next week for more dishes. <laughs>